Well, good morning and happy new year, YouTube friends and family. I'm laughing a little bit because literally I have to do like a blooper reel because I have done about four starts. So, you know, being by myself a lot, especially with this pandemic, I don't talk a lot. So when I try to start talking, sometimes it just goes, but anyway. If you all went out last night, I hope you had a very safe and fun New Year's Eve celebration. It's actually New Year's Eve here, and I have no plans to go out. Ohio is actually on a 10 p.m. curfew, so I'm thinking probably most um, entertainment venues, if you will, are probably not able to have anything because everybody will have to go home and go to bed early. <laughs> so I usually don't make it until the ball drops, but we shall see. And today we've had another inch of snow and some ice. So it's a good day to be inside and bake some bread. So what are we doing today? I thought I would bring you a very simple recipe for a, a beautiful cinnamon twist bread using commonly what most of you probably have in your pantry. And speaking of pantry, I wondered, and I hope you'll drop me a comment below. I haven't been saying on every video, please like, please share, please subscribe. Um, I think that gets redundant and any of us that watch a lot of YouTube, we know all that. Um, so I hate to keep asking you, but I would like your feedback on something. You know, I like to think I have a pretty good staples pantry. So if I wake up like I did today and say, mm, cinnamon bread sounds really, really good. I have the ingredients on hand to make it. So let me know in the comments below, would it be beneficial to you for me to do a video on pantry staples? Now I realize it's no spin January. That's fine. We can always plan ahead, right? Right. Okay, so let's get started making some bread here. I've talked so long. Yep, my water got cold. So the first thing you wanna do, and I'll drop the recipe in the um, description box below, is you wanna cup on half of warm water. Now you all know it's really, cold in my house. It's only 61 degrees in here. So I'm going to pop this in the microwave for just a few seconds and I'll bring you right back. All right, well, we're back. <clears throat> so I've put in my mixer bowl here. Let me scoot you over a bit. And I'm really excited I should share this with you too. My new camera, which I'm not using, um, needs a little bit different tripod than what you use for an iPhone. And my son actually um, found me one that I just need to order a head for. So as soon as I get my equipment more settled out, which may be the first of February, since it's no spin January, I will definitely be using the new camera. So a cup and a half of water. To that, you want to add two teaspoons of instant yeast. Now I'm using the SAF yeast and I keep mine in the freezer and I have never had a problem with it failing to rise as long as I keep it in the freezer. And you can buy this, and I know it's no spin January, but in case you're not participating or you need yeast and it's part of your exceptions, Amazon does have this. I've never been able to find it at my local Walmart. Okay, to our water and yeast, we're going to add two tablespoons of sugar. So we want this bread to be a little sweet, but not sicky sweet because we have some options for the topping as well. Okay, and then finally, you wanna add about a tablespoon of honey. And I'm using raw honey for the health benefits. And I'm finally using for the first time my little wooden thingamajobber that I purchased from Piper Orchard, and I did do a video on that. And I'm just kind of guesstimating the honey to be honest with you it's so sticky I hate um putting it in a measuring spoon and trying to get it out so anyway there you go okay now I'm gonna raise the bowl on my KitchenAid remember whenever you're if you have a KitchenAid whenever you have the dough hook on never go above a level two I'm gonna whirl this around for a moment while this is mixing, I am going to put on my KitchenAid sifter and scale attachment, which I'll share with you in just a moment. So hang tight. Okay, well to my KitchenAid mixer, I have put on my scale and sifter attachment and into the hopper. 
you need to put four cups of bread flour or 548 grams and one teaspoon of salt. So let me add the final cup of flour and then I'm gonna turn it on and show you how it simply sifts and dumps in your flour. I bought this refurbished and I absolutely love it. So it was for me well worth the investment because I make a lot of bread. So I'm gonna let this finish sifting. I'll bring you back to talk about what we're gonna add next. Okay y'all, real life moment. So, <laughs> there's flour everywhere including on the floor. So I walked away from the mixer, mistake number one, and somehow it vibrated the top off and um, yeah, flour went everywhere. So I really have no idea where I am on flour, but this is a good teaching moment to show you what to do if you have some sort of disaster like that. So let me clean this mess up and I'll get right back to you. <laughs> We're back. And you know, technically, since I'm filming this on New Year's Eve, it is still 2020, but I really wish the camera would have been running because it was a total 2020 moment. It just went poof. So if you were to have an accident like that, what do you do? You know, how do you know where you are with your bread? And the answer to that is really pay attention to the texture. So I'm going to show you as we go along. I clean, As I cleaned up, I think it was only like a quarter to maybe a third max, but probably a quarter cup of flour. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to continue to add my ingredients, see if it will come together as a dough ball, and then add bread flour as I need it. So, to this crazy mixture that we've done so far, we are going to add two tablespoons of softened butter. And yeah, here I thought, okay, today I pre-measured everything. It's going to go so smooth. Um, yeah, no. That was a 2020 moment if there's ever been one. Okay, so we're gonna add our butter. Then you want to add two tablespoons of powdered milk, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and then about a teaspoon of vanilla. All right, so I'm gonna let this come together Keep cleaning up flour because <laughs> I'm sure we'll be finding flour for a while. But you know, um, this attachment is wonderful and I love it. What the problem was is this knob I didn't tighten all the way down. Operator error. So I'm going to give this dough a few minutes to come together. I'm going to evaluate it and then I'm going to show you what to do to fix my boo boo. So stay tuned. You know, we've all made a lot of jokes about 2020 but I am totally having a 2020 day. So um, what happened when I was evaluating my dough is I pushed record, but I didn't push it hard enough. So it didn't show the part where I was adding flour. So what you would do in a case where you know, you've had the disaster or the flour foof like I did is just, first of all, estimate what you lost if you can. And then I just tapped in a little bit of flour, a little bit of flour, and then I would periodically pinch the dough. And when it would pinch with my flour, with my fingers coming away clean, then I knew that it had come together as a dough ball and I continued kneading it for five minutes. So my apologies guys, but that's not a real important part of the video because you are not gonna have a flour floof disaster. So stay tuned for more. All right, well, we are back. Our five minutes have concluded. I'm going to remove the bread bowl from the mixer. And my counter, trust me, is extremely clean. You know, I just have been bemoaning the fact that I'm probably going to be cleaning up glitter till like spring from Christmas decorations. And now I think I can add flour to that. So all I'm doing here is just working the dough into a nice ball. And if it's sticking a little bit to your counter, not a problem. You can put a little flour down. I think this is actually just fine the way it is. And 
Actually, the more you knead it and bring it together, the less sticky it will be. So we have our nice round pretty dough ball. And I'm not gonna clean the mixer bowl out. It just has dough in it. I am going to use a little bit of corn oil versus olive oil. I do that for all my sweet breads, but you can use any oil you prefer or have on hand. I'm going to put that dough in the bowl, spin it, make sure it's well covered. Take a damp, I call these bread towels, but I think they're the technical name is bar towel. This is clean. The stains on it are actually from black cocoa. And then we're going to put it into a nice warm place. I'm gonna put it in my oven with the light on because my house is like freezing and let it rise for an hour and I'll bring you right back. All right, well, it's been an hour and let me show you how pretty and nice and happy this bread looks. So what I'm gonna do here, roll up my sleeves, take off my ring, and I'm just gonna let the air out of the bread. So punch it down, if you will. And I'm gonna turn it out onto the counter, which incidentally I've cleaned again. For those of you watching who have a YouTube channel, this video has kind of become like, I will make this video. <sighs> All right, so let me tip you down a little bit. What I'm doing now is I have my Pullman pan and this is a 13 inch pan and I'm kind of using it as a measuring gauge as I press out the dough because what we're gonna do is roll it up, cut it in half, twist it and put it in our Pullman pan for the second rise. I was thinking, because um, I've not made this in anything but a 13 inch Pullman pan, you probably could make like a regular size loaf and then a um, shorter loaf. I'm afraid if you just squeeze it together, it would take a long time to actually cook through and it might get kind of hard on the outside. So let me share with you, my lovely neighbor gave me this as a Christmas gift. So I have a real rolling pin. So I'm just gonna use this to kind of square up my dough and get it to an even thickness. And then we're gonna put some delicious cinnamon and sugar on the surface and then roll it up. So it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but what I found is the more rectangular you can get it, and even as you can get the dough, the more evenly it is gonna cook for you. And there's nothing worse than making a beautiful loaf of bread that looks done and finding out it isn't done at all. Okay, so I'm just kinda squaring this up. And by the way, I hadn't said this, but it smells amazing. Okay. So while that's not a perfect rectangle, it's close enough. Now what you wanna do on the surface of the bread is you wanna coat it with powdered sugar. Now, if you happen to not have powdered sugar on hand, don't forget that you can simply take granulated sugar, whirl it up in a blender, and voila, you have powdered sugar. And I could not find my little <laughs> sifter. Like I said, it's a 2020 day. So I am just gonna use this bigger one. And this does make kind of a mess, but um, given what I've been through with the flour today, yeah, I'm not so worried about the amount of mess it makes. So what you wanna do is coat the surface of the bread pretty heavily with powdered sugar. And you wanna coat it until you cannot see the actual bread dough beige color anymore. The whole surface looks white. I don't use a lot of powdered sugar, but the next time I make a batch, I'll insert that into a video for you all, just to show you how simple it is. And it's just one less staple that you have to 
worry about keeping on hand or purchasing because you can make it yourself and it tastes just the same to me. Okay, and what I'm doing here is I've got some um, balls, if you will, of um, powdered sugar, and I am just smooshing those out across the bread here. Now, I'm not quite satisfied that I have enough, so let's put a little bit more and try to get up to the edges a little bit better. So, do you all have a traditional New Year's Day meal? Are you a pork and sauerkraut person? I am going to have pork, for sure. But, I don't have any sauerkraut. So... I do have some cabbage, so I figure that's close enough to sauerkraut. So that is what I think I will be having based on my meal planning that I've done. So we're getting pretty close here. I'm probably being a little fussier than I need to be, but after my earlier debacle, I'm trying to redeem myself. Okay, so that looks pretty good dump the end of that in there. And then you want to take your cinnamon and I'm going to check the, <laughs> the sprinkle top. I'm a little goosey after that flower floof. Thankfully, I wasn't doing a sponsored KitchenAid ad for the sifter slash scale attachment because that would have been disaster. All right. So you can kind of, I don't measure these. I just do it to look really, till I'm satisfied that it's going to be cinnamon, cinnamony enough. That's hard to say. And we are going to put some cinnamon sugar on the top after the second rise. Okay. Now what you want to do is roll this up tightly into a log. Now, I will tell you this. Some people like to spray water on the powdered sugar and cinnamon so it sticks a little better. Typical day for me, I could not find a sprayer bottle that had not had something in it that I would not want to spray on food. So, yeah, I'm just gonna skip that part. So what I'm doing now is I'm just sealing the edges, tucking in those ends, so that we have a nice uniform log of dough. And you can see it's a little bit longer than the Pullman PM, but we can compress it a little bit. So just make sure that seam is in there good and tight. The ends are tucked in tight. And now what you want to do, make sure your log is as even as you possibly can, is take a bench cutter or something sharp, and we're gonna cut this in two. Just like this. And you may have, if you didn't spray it with the water, you may get a little powdered sugar floof. I guess floof is the word of the day here at the Clark House, but that's okay. <clears throat> so now you can see we have two separate and distinct pieces and it stuck a little bit, but not terribly. So, eh, scooch back. All right, so starting at the end, I'm gonna pinch the two ends together like this. And then the, the bottom piece, I'm simply gonna pick it up and put it over the top. And I'm gonna continue down the length of the bread pieces, just twisting. And when I get to the end, and I didn't lose a lot of powdered sugar, I'm going to pinch it together. And there you have it. Isn't that beautiful? And wait till you see it baked. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Pullman pan, let me just share a few pieces with you. I've done it on past videos. Pullman pans actually sometimes come with a lid. 
and where it got its name is they were used on Pullman train cars to make very square loaves of bread so they could stack more of them into the train car. It's a beautiful loaf pan, very well worth the money. And I'll try to drop Amazon links to uh, the, both the Pullman pan as well as the KitchenAid sifter mixer <laughs> attachment if you um, are still interested after the fluth. But again, that was operator error. So what I'm gonna do here is just pick up my loaf and put it into the pan. Okay. And you wanna kind of make it pretty and get it even, but that actually went in there very nicely. So there you have it. Isn't, doesn't that look delicious? So now what we need to do is cover it again with our damp bread towel or bar towel. I'm going to let it rise again for another 30 to 45 minutes until it has increased significantly in size. And I'll bring you back to show you what that looks like. All right, this bread is happening finally. So look how lovely and large our cinnamon twist bread has gotten. And I actually left this for 40 minutes, just to give you a point of reference. <clears throat> now on almost all of my breads, even savory breads, not sweet breads, I like to do an egg wash because it makes a lovely shiny top. Um, produces a nice crust, so I really like that. So what I've done is just beaten up an egg with a tiny bit of water, and I am going to coat the top of this gorgeous bread. And you do wanna be careful not to deflate it as you're brushing the egg on. So you just want a nice, even coating, and then you have some choices. So you can totally bake this as is and put an icing on it if you like something really sweet and decadent or <clears throat> what i'm going to do is i made a little mix up here and i'll share the ingredients with you in just a moment um cinnamon and sugar with a little kick that i'm going to put on the top of it you could also do like a crumble um like you would put on a open top apple pie with maybe like brown sugar and a little flour and butter and some cinnamon, yum. So really your options are open as to what you might wanna do. So what I'm going to do is I made a mixture of just plain table sugar, granulated sugar, some cinnamon, a tiny bit, and I mean a tiny bit of ground ginger. Too much of this can really feel spicy and overwhelming on the tongue. And then my own, home dehydrated orange peel. So I thought that would be a nice combination and I just mixed it up in a little container and I'm going to sprinkle it pretty generously here on the top. One of the reasons I decided against a crumble is because I want to be able to toast the bread and I also usually share my bread with the neighbor who got me the rolling pin and they definitely enjoy homemade bread. So I thought, you know, they may not want all that sicky sweet icing, or they also may not want a bread that you can't put in the toaster because this makes a great breakfast bread. So um, yeah, it seems like a lot of my meal planning has been around breakfast, first waffles, then cinnamon bread. But this can also make a really, really nice um, treat, snack, um, afternoon tea or coffee, however, you have your snacks, this can be good as well. So I am just using up what I made up and it's sticking really well with the egg wash we put on. And then kind of as a final hurrah, I am going to put a little bit of sanding sugar. Again, checking that, that lid, just so it's sparkly and holiday-ish. So we'll probably take it over for New Year's. Alrighty, so into a preheated 350 degree oven, 30 to 35 minutes. I've shared before my oven is slow. I do have it on convect. So I'll bring you back at the end to show you the finished loaf and to let you know how long it took to bake. All right, well, we're finally finished. Look, guys, at this gorgeous bread. 
So I actually ended up baking mine for 38, no, yes, 38 minutes. Um, I had taken it out and it wasn't quite done. So if you're unsure, let me bring the bread up closer. Woo, that's hot. If you can hear that hollow sound when you flick on the bread, you do want to check the middle of the bottom of your bread to be sure that it's completely done all the way through. But I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this is something you'll give a try to. Don't forget to leave the comment below about pantry staples. And I hope you all have a very safe and happy new year. Be well, be healthy, be blessed, and I'll see y'all very soon. Take care.